Man, do I have a bunch of huge stories for you today. Starting with AMD's monster custom machine, the RTX 5090's price is slightly better than we thought, but still terrible. Ryzen 10,000 finally brings more cores, and RX 9000 will change everything. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, as you can see here, Microsoft just announced their new Azure HB V5 virtual machine. And this features, as you can see, a unique custom hardware made by AMD. This was actually announced at the Microsoft Ignite events where they introduced, yes, a custom design AMD processor solution that, well, let's just say does some pretty awesome stuff. For starters, you can see that it comes with a whopping 400 to 450 gigabytes of HBM3 memory and it features double the Infinity Fabric bandwidth compared to any previous AMD Epic server platform. Don't forget, once again, that this is custom specifically built for this. Really, I will say that AMD is probably one of the best to do kind of custom designs like this simply because pretty much all of their CPUs are based on an MCM design. So they can put certain things in, take others away, and it's a whole lot simpler without having to completely and utterly design everything from the ground up. Of course, Intel has been doing designs like this recently as well, but AMD has been doing it for quite a bit longer. With that said, moving on, you can see this bad boy comes with 352 Zen 4 CPU cores. Now, that is the total amount of cores, and it's split up into four CPUs, which means each CPU itself comes with 88 cores. And really though, the biggest thing here, this is absolutely bonkers. Microsoft, you can see that says the development marks a strategic shift in addressing memory performance limitations, which Microsoft identifies as a critical bottleneck in HPC applications. And with that, as you can see, so this is their previous versions. This bad boy comes with nearly seven terabytes per second memory bandwidth. Yes, this is one beast of a platform. Next up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 pricing looks a little bit better than what we originally thought, but it's still completely insane. But before I get into that, a few weeks ago when the hurricanes came through Florida, I was one of the thousands of people who lost power. And during that, I was only able to do a video thanks to this power station from EcoFlow. I've had it for a while to use certain power tools when I'm away from home, but what's wild is that not too long after that, they wanted to sponsor the channel. So of course I accepted and they sent over their brand new version, the River 3 Plus. And man, is this thing cool. It can power just about anything with its 600 watts output and up to 1200 watts with X Boost. It uses the LiPo 4 battery so it can last for over 10 years. It also comes with three AC outputs that can be used as a UPS for your computer with a less than 10 millisecond auto switch for gaming, as well as one DC output, two USB-A, and one USB-C port. But the biggest thing has to be the insanely fast charging. This bad boy can literally go from zero to 100% in just one hour. And it's that fast charging that made me go with EcoFlow when I was looking a little while back. So you've got to check them out because today they're offering my viewers an extra 5% off when you visit my link and use the code in the description below. Now back to the story, if you saw my recent video where I discussed Nvidia's next gen GPU pricing, you know that yet another leaker claimed that the highest end RTX 5090 would cost between $2,000 and $2,500. Well, as we get closer and closer to launch, we're obviously going to get more accurate information. And just recently, the news outlet Bits and Chips tweeted this. As you can see, it says the GeForce RTX 5090 will cost $1,900. That's obviously still completely absurd, but it gets even worse because he later clarifies right down here that from OEM's latest information about the MSRP, we're looking at between $1,899, so $1,900, and $2,000. $1,000. Not only that, but he also clarifies that the overclock versions will cost a lot more. So that $2,500 
isn't completely off the table, but either way, that 1900 is really just the minimum possibility. Either way, this is definitely looking to be the most accurate, given if anyone would know, it would be OEMs. Now, as this user right here states, no one knows for sure until the actual presentation day. And this is true. I mean, I've actually been given a price before by the company themselves. So an official price, and yet the company changed it just like a day or two before release. That obviously had to do with competition, yet when it comes to this, everything points to there not being competition from AMD. But that does not mean there's no hope. There's actually one way NVIDIA won't release their GPU at such a wild price, and that is to not buy it. That's right, it's actually in your hands. If NVIDIA doesn't sell enough units, they'll be forced to lower the price. So, like I've said before, let NVIDIA know that you won't buy it at that price. Comment down below, tweet it out, do whatever you can to tell them that this is simply absurd. That's really our only hope. If people are willing to spend the money, then they'd obviously sell it for that. I mean, think about it. When you sell an item on eBay, do you take the lowest offer? No, you take the highest bidder. So the one with all the power is the consumer. And next up, I recently went over the fact that AMD's Zen 6 CPUs are set to be supported on their AM5 platform. So you shouldn't have to switch motherboards when they release. Well, now we're getting word from a source by Red Gaming Tech that AMD's next gen, we'll call them Ryzen 10,000 for now, is set to finally include more cores. Now, he's talking potentially as much as 16 cores per CCD, which would mean 32 cores total, but that's tough to see happening given the CPU would likely need to be bigger than the AM5 socket. But what does make sense is big and little cores. AMD has discussed this possibility in the past, and obviously they've been doing it with their mobile chips for quite a while now, so maybe AMD would do something like, say, 8 big cores and 8 little cores, something around there. But either way, it does sound like AMD's next gen will include more cores. And this is something that was recently reiterated on the Anantech forums by a leaker you can see right here. It says higher core count. Now they're also talking about when it's releasing, things like that, but I have gone over that in a recent video, but simply put, AMD's Zen 6 Ryzen 10,000 could finally include more cores. And lastly for today, not too long ago, AMD themselves confirmed that the company was planning to combine their gaming optimized GPU architecture with their compute optimized GPU architecture into one called UDNA. And if you didn't see that, well, that means you definitely need to subscribe to GamerMeld and hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date on all the latest PC hardware news. Regardless, this originally came from Tom's Hardware and it was an interview with AMD and in it, he actually said this, he says, so going forward, we're thinking about not just RDNA 5, RDNA 6, RDNA 7, but UDNA 6 and UDNA 7. And it's the fact that they specifically mentioned UDNA 6 that we thought that this would happen with RDNA 6. Well, according to today's story, it looks like it's actually gonna happen even sooner than that. As you can see right here, it says the unified architecture known as UDNA now has a rumored debut date. According to this leaker right here, which is a Chappelle hardware leaker with a very good track record, we're talking leaked roadmaps, things like that. So definitely someone who has inside information. And according to them, AMD is said to be preparing to introduce UDNA gaming GPUs no sooner than Q2 2026. Specifically, you can see right here, there is no longer an RDNA 5 codename. After RDNA 4, it will in fact be UDNA. We're talking the MI400 GPU as well as RX 9000. Ultimately, this means AMD is completely redoing everything from the ground up. Now, we actually saw AMD do this before when they went from GCN to RDNA and CDNA, and now it's like they're going back. But either way, this will be a huge change for the company, and it may, in fact, make their next generation GPUs after RX 8000 significantly better. I mean, obviously, 
they are more than likely planning to add things for AI, but that could mean way better upscaling, all of that stuff. And we more or less already know that AMD is planning to use AI-based upscaling in the future, so this really could be a big part of that. But regardless, things are about to change and change soon.